Uh, three, two. So we're going to stick with our exponential and logistic functions. We're going to do some modeling today. Not that guy. All right, exponential and logistic models. They sound pretty. Uh, a couple of parts today. The first part we're going to do is let's do some exponential modeling. Okay, so these exponential modeling are going to happen a few ways. We're going to have population growth. We're going to have like bacteria in a petri dish type of stuff. We're also going to have radioactive decay. Okay, so all kinds of different things that exponential um, models happen in. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a formula though. Um, and this comes from the Algebra 2 book, because your book here, they actually didn't, don't give it to you this way, but I want to kind of give it to you the way you're used to, and it's, I think it's simpler. So if you have growth, okay, exponential growth, um, you're going to have something like this. Uh, what variables should we use? Just y. y equals um, a sub 0, 1 plus r to the t. Okay, I don't know if you remember that, yeah, um, where a sub zero is the initial amount that you're starting with, r is your rate of growth, usually given to you as a percentage, you need to change it into a decimal, and t is the time. So it could be days, months, weeks, years, depending on the problem, okay? All right, so that's growth, decay is y equals a sub 0. Do you remember what's inside here? 1 minus r to the t. Okay. So if something's decaying by 4%, you want to do 1 minus 0 0.04. So that number in there would be 0.96. Okay. And then everything else is the same as above. Right. So think about it. Here we go. If I say that my population is growing by 10%, okay, then the base of my exponential function is going to be 1.1. And the reason why is because I'm getting 100% of the, the population back plus an additional 10%. Okay? So if you say something is decreasing by 5%, what are you actually getting back? 95%, right? So that would be 0.95. So that's why we add 1 to growth and we subtract from 1 for decay. <clears throat> okay, so let's do 1. Number 1. Number 1. All right. We are going to say whether this is growth or decay. Growth, decay, question mark. And then we want to um, find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay. And then we're going to find the rate. We're going to find out what R is. So I'm going to give you uh, two cities. Let's see if you've ever been to either one of these cities. The first city, San Jose. When you think of San Jose, what do you think of? The sharks. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Some of you do. I think of that too. Jake's not listening, but he would say yes, for sure, the sharks. Okay, anyway, so here's the population of San Jose. Here is the um, formula that they have come up with. P of T equals uh, 898,759 times 1.0064 to the T. All right, give yourself some room. Uh, we're going to answer that question in just a minute. Let me give you a second city. Detroit. What do you think of when you think of Detroit? Uh-huh, crime and the Red Wings, yeah. Um, <laughs> crime, <laughs> right? Is that what you think of? I do. It's really a terrible city, isn't it? Okay, anyways, Detroit. Um, and you'll see from its, its uh, population model that people don't want to live there. Um, there's a lot of people that do, though. So 1,203,368 and then 0.9858 to the T. All right, so here we go. 
We're going to say whether each city is growing or decaying in their population, and then the rate at which they are growing or decaying. So let's look at San Jose. San Jose, beautiful city in California, right? Gorgeous. You probably want to go there. Um, is that growing or decaying? Growing, yes. So all you got to do is look in here. And if it's above one, it's a growth. And how much is it growing by? This is kind of weird. It's growing by 0 0.0064. We want to put this into a percentage. So we move the decimal to the right. And it's growing at a rate of 0.64%. That's not a lot. You know, but it's still growing. Not a lot. 0.64%. So not even 1% growth. All right, let's look at Detroit. Detroit growth or decay? Decay. This number is under 1. It's between 0 and 1. So that would be a decay. And what is the decay here? What you want to do is you want to take 1 minus 0.9858. And what do you get? You get a point, um, one. Four, two, is that right? Did you do it? Okay, good. And then, no, point zero, one, four, two, sorry. And then you want to move that to the right, two decimal places to the right, so it's decaying at a rate of 1.42%. All right, nice, very good. Okay, let's make our own now, number two. Number two. These aren't going to be too bad today. I don't think I was looking ahead, going, okay, what's the hardest thing of today? Uh, there's not really that, it's not really that bad. We're going to do some calculator stuff, graphing. That's going to be the hardest part is figuring out the window, I think. Um, so this next one's going to be pretty, pretty basic, pretty easy. It says to determine an exponential function, an expo function with the initial value given to you is 12, and um, increasing at a rate of 8% per, 8 per year. Increasing at a rate of 8% per year. Okay? All right. And we just have to come up with our own function for this. Okay? You can use whatever variables you want. It doesn't matter. I would just use y and x, or maybe y and t. I kind of like t in this. So I would say y equals, my initial amount is 12. So it's growing at a rate of 8%, which means that that would be, my base would be 1.08 to the t, to the x, whatever you want. Okay? Very nice. Very basic. And then they might ask you some follow-up questions like, uh, you know, how much is there after 10 years? You plug in 10, stuff like that. Okay. Let's move on to, um, instead of population, let's do a bacteria problem. And this is kind of like the one you did last night, but it's going to be um, a little harder. Okay? I know. So let's say that you have 100 bacteria sitting there in your Petri dish. Petri dish. And it's going to double every hour. Gross. Double every hour you got to get that bacteria under control. Let me take some medicine or something. Uh, we're going to now predict, predict when we will have uh, 350,000 bacteria. Okay? So it's a little different than yesterday's work. Yesterday, they gave you the formula, right? And then they told you to plug in numbers. It was nice and easy. Today, you have to come up with your own model to express this situation. And then not, they gave you the other answer instead of like the T, you know, it's harder. So here we go. Let's go ahead and write an equation for this to start off with. Y equals 100 and it's doubling. So what do you think that this is gonna be? Two, okay? Double, triple, two, three, quadruple, four, okay? To the T. Now we need to predict the time it's going to take to get 350,000. So we're actually going to take 350,000 and plug it in for Y. Yesterday you got to plug in for T and that was easy. So here's what you're going to do. The only way to solve this would be using logs and we're not quite there yet. If you remember how to do it by solving using logs, go for it. Yeah, solve algebraically. Um, if not, then this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to your calculator and you're going to plot Y1 equals 100 
times 2 to the t, and y2 equals 350,000. And what we're going to get is we want to find out where these are going to intersect, okay? So you go to your calculator. I'll, I'm going to do it in just a minute, but I'll show you that you get something like this, and then you're going to get a straight line, and we want to find out what that value is right there. All right, so let's do it. Here we go. Hardest part on this is finding the window, right? So go to y equals, and we'll go 100 times 2 to the x. You don't need parentheses. Your calculator knows correct order of operations. And this is 350,000. Now, if I hit a normal zoom fit or zoom standard window, that's not going to work. So let's do this. I'm going to go my x min. I'm going to start at 0. And I don't know how many days this is going to take. Maybe a month. Let's, do, let's try 30. And then my y min 0, and I need to go to at least 350,000, so maybe I'll just go to 400,000. Okay. And then I hit graph. So there's the first part. Ooh, whoa, overkill. Yeah, that's good, though, right? Okay, so I can see exactly where they intersect. And then you go to second trace, number 5. Hit enter three times, and there you go. So t is approximately... 11.77 days. Yeah. Days hours? hours. You're right. Oopsies. Let's um, cross that out. This is in hours. Thank you, Joy. Hours. Okay. 11.77 hours. So 11 hours and about 46 minutes. Yeah. What was your window? Ooh, my window was, uh, my X was 0 to 30. So 30 hours, not a month. So 30 hours. And then a uh, minimum was zero to 400,000 for the wise. Yeah, so every hour. Yeah, that's important. So whenever, you know, I would have gotten this half wrong. I would have marked off half a point for that if I had written days, because it's not true. 11.77 days is a lot different than 11.77 hours, right? For sure. All right, um, let's do a radioactive, radioactive, sorry. Let's do a radioactive one real quick. Every year, every year I got to do that. Um, so, here's the formula for uh, half-life. Uh, y equals a sub zero. Half-life, the decay factor is one-half, okay? And then it's raised to the t divided by whatever the half-life is, okay? t divided by half-life. Um, your exponent is still the variable, but then it has to be divided by the half-life given of this radioactive substance, okay? So here we go. It says here that the half-life of something, they didn't say what it was, the half-life of a radioactive substance is 20 days. Um, there are initially initially five grams present. Um, the question is going to be, when will, how long will it take to get down to one gram? When will there be one gram left? <coughs> when will there be one gram remaining? Okay, once again, they gave you the hard way to do this. The easy way is, how many grams do you have after, you know, 40 days? That's the easy one. But this is the other way, okay? So let's first find our equation. Our equation would be y equals, our initial amount is 5. Now, if you like to use 1 half, you can. If you like to use 0.5, you can do that too. It doesn't matter. And then the half-life is 20 days. So this is going to be to the t over 20. Okay, so it's still to the t, that's your exponent, but you have to divide it by the half-life the half -life of the substance. And so what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in for y1, and then we're going to plug in y2 equals 1 and find out where they intersect. So this time, our graph is going to look like this. Our initial present value is going to be 5. <clears throat> it's going to go like this, okay, because it's a decay. And then you're also going to get y equals 1, and we have to find out where they intersect. So we're going to have to change our window again. <coughs> All right, so go to your calculator. 0.5 to that. Now, if you have an older calculator, 
you have to put parentheses around t divided by 20. Okay, I have a newer calculator, not newer that compared to some of you, but newer that it puts the whole thing up top, x, x over 20. And then this will be 1. Now, this is very different than the last graph that I just did, because that went all the way up to 400,000. So my x min, 0 to 30, we can try that. And then my y min, we can go 0 to, I would probably go to 7. See, 5 is the most it's going to be. 5 is the initial amount, and it's decaying from there. So if I hit graph, uh, I'm going to need a bigger x, huh? Yeah. Did you know that already? I did too, but I wanted to show you. Like, if you're doing your homework you're on a test, you see that they're not intersecting, give yourself a bigger window. I'm going to go to 100 now so that I don't have to keep doing it all the time. So, okay. And there it is. Cross is right there. Uh, what's that going to be, like 40-something? Did you find it already? Good. 46.44. All right, so our answer would be 46.44, and let's go back and see what our units were in. This was in days. How many days is it going to take? 46.44 days. Yeah? I like this. I mean, this isn't too bad, right? Um, we're going to learn how to solve these algebraically later on in the chapter, but right now we're allowed to use our calculator. Okay, speaking of calculators, this is going to be the next part, part B. We're gonna do some regression. Okay, some scatter plots. Now, we've done scatter plots with lines. Uh, you've done them with quadratics before because we did that in Algebra 2. I'm actually teaching that tomorrow. Um, but sometimes a regression is not a line, it's not a parabola. It looks more like an exponential function. Okay, so like population growth. So here we go. Uh, we have a table of values and we're gonna predict the population. So it says here, uh, the table of data for 1900-2000 um, exponential regression to predict the U.S. population. Compare the results with the actual population shown in the table. Okay, so here we go. Number, what are we on? Five. I don't want to do too many, you know, just kind of overwhelm you. Um, so here's the year and here's the population. I'm just going to write a few down so we don't have to, like, spend too much time typing this in. Um, 1900, in 1900, there were 76.2 million people. This population's in millions um, in the United States. In 1920, there was 106 million. 1940, there was 132.2. 1960, there was 179.3. Uh, 1980, 226.5. And 2000, there were 281.4 million people. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our calculator. They gave you all of them from 10, 20, 30. I just, I skipped and just did, you know, 20, 40, 60, 80. Um, and they want you to let T, let me see. They want you to let T be the years after 1900. Okay? T equals the years after 1900. They don't want you plugging in 1900, 1920. They would want you to plug in zero, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Okay, so just be aware of that. They'll say that in your homework, too. Just be careful. Okay, so let's do it. We're going to go to Stat, Edit. Make sure you clear your list of anything that you have. And we'll go ahead and go 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay. And then over here, type in the population. So do this with me so that we make sure that your calculator is working correctly. I know it's easy to just sit back and watch and be like, meh. So once you do that, I went ahead and graphed it just to see what it looks like. So I go to stat, I go to y equals, and I clear everything out. I go up here and I turn my plots on. So they're turned on. 
and then I hit zoom nine, and there it is, okay? It looks pretty linear, um, but we'll see. It's, it's actually gonna be pretty good exponentially, so there's an exponential growth. That, that, looks, that looks exponential to me. So let's go ahead and calculate. We wanna calculate the equation for the growth. So go to stat, calculate, and let's skip linear, let's skip quadratic, and let's go to zero, which is EXPREG, exponential regression, okay? So that's what they'll ask you to do. They'll say, find an exponential equation, exponential regression equation that models this growth. So you hit enter. Some of you have to enter a few times, and there it is. Oh, okay, so you need to turn the stat diagnostics on. So go to mode, and if you see it at the bottom, it says stat diagnostics, turn those on. All right, so stat calc zero, there we go. Okay, so let's write it down. So we have y equals 79.1, let's just do one decimal place there, that's fine, um, times... 1.013 to the x. And r is 0.99, r squared is 0.99. This is a really good model, okay, really good. So there it is. And then it'll say something like, predict the population, predict the population for 2017. And then we can Google that and see if that actually is true. Hmm. What would you plug in for x if they asked you to do this for 2017? Yes, X would be 117. Because remember, it's years after 1900. So we would go and do, what was that heavy sigh for, Lucas? Calculator not working, right? Oh, you did. Okay, and so when I plug this in, I get that there are 358.5 people living in the United States. What's wrong with that? Million. Okay, that's a big difference, right? So I got 358.5 millions, million or millions of people living in the United States. I'm gonna Google that later, check to see if that's actually accurate. Now, there's another way to do this, and that would be to, with the same stuff, number six, let's find a logistic regression for this population growth, okay? So keep the same data points in, in your L1, L2, and let's go to stat, calculate, and scroll down. There's so many options. There it is, logistic. There's a logistic one. Remember that? We did that yesterday that had the, the two asymptotes at zero and then, mm -hmm. So go ahead and choose that. Now it's gonna take a while. Don't think your calculator's broken. It, it really, mine takes forever. It, it's still thinking, it's still working. It, oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> all right, so here we go. A logistic regression for this would be y equals 731.9 over uh, one plus a, which is 8.5 e to the negative bx. Wow, negative point zero. Uh, one seven x. That's pretty gross, huh? Now the thing with logistic, you're probably wondering where your r r squared is. You don't get one with that. Yeah, it doesn't figure it out. Um, what you can do is you can go and graph this thing. So we can graph seven hundred and thirty one point nine divided by one plus eight point five e to the negative 0.017x. And then hit graph, and let's see how good this graph is. Look at that, that hits like almost every point. What this graph does compared to the last graph, um, let's put that last graph in too. y equals 79.1, am I running out of time, we're okay. 1.013 to the x. If I graph that, I wish I had a color calculator right now. They're so good. They're both really good. Look at that. Do you see it? Uh-huh. 
the thing is, um, let me change my window and let's make um, X, this only goes to 110 years after. Let's go to like 500 years after, okay? So if I graph that, oh, I'd probably need to change Y too. Yeah, let's change Y also, that was silly. It really takes a long time for these things to graph too. Mm -hmm. Still thinking. There we go. Um, my Y max, let's go to, I don't know, maybe the population is going to be a billion. I hope not. So there's our data points. And then here's our exponential. And see how our logistic, it tapers off, right? That kind of makes sense. Do you really think it's going to go to like a billion? I don't think so. There's no way that many people can fit here. So the logistic, what that does is it goes through the data points, you know, but then it has an asymptote right here at 732 million people. That's still a lot. <laughs> That's still way too many. All right. So some people would say logistics better. Some people would say the exponential's really good. They're both really good for that. What happened? Did yours do something weird? No, she can't just put his Y max as like an insanely high number and it's looking chill. Oh. <laughs> now, they're going to ask you what is the max sustainable population for the United States, okay? That number comes from right there, right here the constant up top, okay? So you would say 731.9 million people. That's the maximum sustainable population. All right, I've got one more, number seven. And it's about a rumor. Yes. It says here that the certain high school has 1,200 students, 1,200 students. And Bob, Carol, Ted, and Alice start a rumor bunch of jerks, which spreads logistically. Mm, you know, rumors, they spread very quickly, don't they? Now, the rumor's not going to spread to a million people, though, at this school. There's only 1,200 people. So it's a logistic growth, and it's 1,200 over 1 plus 39e to the negative 0.9t. Okay? That models the rumor of the students who have heard the rumor by the end of day T, by the end of the day. So how many students heard the rumor by the end of day zero? Day zero is like the starting day. So how many by the end of day zero? All you're going to do, you're going to take zero and plug it in for T. So you take zero and plug it in for T. You get 1,200 over 40. Right? E to the 0 is 1 times 39 is 1 plus 1. So how many people is that? 30 people. Dang, 30 people already. So these four people, they spread this rumor, and at the end of day 0, they call it, you know, day 0, um, 30 people have heard the rumor. Okay, let's find out how many people have heard it. by day five, okay, day five. Don't worry about, oh, day zero, so is that day six? Just plug in five, okay? Don't worry about any of that. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug in five for this. Do you know how to plug in five for that? 1,200 divided by parentheses, one plus 39 times e to the negative 0.9 times five. So how many people by day five? Whoa. 837 people, about, approximately. So the question's going to be, the last question, which I don't even know if we can get to, um, how long will it take for 1,000 people to hear it? 1,000 people, so how long? All right, this is where you're going to have to go to your calculator. You're going to graph the original, this S of T, and then you're going to graph for y2, 1,000, and find the intersection, okay? We don't, I don't think we have time to do that. So I'll go ahead and just show you what it looks like. So the logistic function would go like this, okay? It tapers off down here at zero, tapers off at 1,200. And then you would graph y equals 1,000. And you would get right here the intersection, which ends up being 
uh, t equals 5.86. 5.6. I think the bells are off. Was that the seven-minute bell? Did you hear that? No? Okay. I better... Uh...